Welcome to part 23. In this video, hopefully we're going to wrap up the color box functionality, um, at least for the login form section of the content management system. And uh, in the last video, we ran into an issue right at the end where color box was seeming to process the form correctly, except we were running into a prepare issue, um, an error message within our authorization object. So if we go to our models and open up the authorization object, um, you'll notice that it's calling the original database object. Um, this particular object no longer exists because this is code left over from the um, object-oriented PHP login series that I did. So rather than using regular database, I'm going to call FP database to access the database object within the main flight path object. And rather than using global database, I'm going to use global FP so we can access the FP object. So let's go back to test and see what we get at the moment. And it says invalid username or password. So we are getting back the correct uh, response. So let me go ahead and tweak this a little bit more. Um, first thing that I notice is this box doesn't automatically expand to fit the full amount of contents um, if we add in an error message here. So how I'm going to go about fixing that, if I open up login.php, um, remember Ajax just returns whatever HTML the browser or the uh, PHP processing script returns. So if we have an invalid login and we want to change the height of the uh, color box, I'm going to go ahead and insert a line here. Um, Let's say we'll set the alert, and I'm going to echo out, and this will appear within the color box ultimately, um, a script. And we can resize the color box using the color box resize function, which is uh, talked about in the color box documentation. So we do that with uh, jQuery.colorbox dot resize like so and um, this function automatically resizes the color box based on the contents so we did include this line and I also want to include this line in case the user um, didn't input either a username or a password so same thing I'm going to place it right here just before we load our login view. Let's save that and run a quick test. And you'll notice the login box resizes. And um, test, test. And we do get an invalid username or password, but things look like they're working correctly. One thing I wanted to note before we continue is if you do try to log in with the correct username and password, you will run into some issues. Um, we haven't built out a couple different files that we're going to need. Um, for example, if you haven't built out a logged in view or a v underscore logging in view at the moment. So you will have some issues. So hold off on doing that for the moment. Um, I'm going to come back to that in the next video and talk about successful login and logout functionality. Um, however, we're just about finished with this particular video, um, but there are a couple things I did want to tweak. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk about making this cancel button work. Um, it would be nice to have a way to close out this pop-up by being able to click a button. And um, I also want to talk about removing this question mark and login from the URL when the user closes this window. So um, we're going to approach this by making a couple changes to the existing code. Um, first thing we're going to do is I want to make sure that there's no way to close this login box with, um, without clicking the cancel button. So um, there are a couple options that I need to set. So if I go back to my, um, it's actually my template, t underscore login dot php. Um, there are two additional options that I need to set when I initially call color box. Um, first of them is overlay close. 
and I'm going to set that to false. And the second one is escape key. I'm going to set that one to false as well. And uh, these are two options. One that says um, clicking on the overlay um, closes the light, closes the color box, and the other one is hitting the escape key closes the color box. And uh, we want to make sure that the only way to close it is uh, via that cancel button. And one other thing that I want to remove is this little X here because that also closes this field. And uh, I'm going to approach it like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy the URL and open it up in Firefox. And I'm going to use Firebug to find out what element that X is. It looks like it's CBOX close as the ID. I'm going to bring up Coda again. I'm going to open up the color box folder and specifically the color box CSS file. And um, change color box close and remove color box close dot hover. Um, I'm going to change that to display none. So it's hidden by default. If we go back to test, we don't have that X anymore. So now there isn't any way to close this box, but we're going to go ahead and add it um, in the v underscore login .php file. And we're going to add it by adding an additional uh, jQuery event here. And this one is going to be um, going to be connected to something with the ID of fp underscore cancel. And if you remember correctly, um, fp underscore cancel is ID for that cancel link. And um, we can't just use a regular click item like this um, because this element doesn't exist when the page is first loaded. So we need to use um, jQuery's live function. And if I open up Firefox, um, you can check out the live function documentation at api.jquery.com slash live. And basically, um, as the description says here, it says it attaches a handler to the event for all elements which match the current selector now and in the future. So what this does is this means that we can access the um, items. Let me start over. When items with an ID of FP underscore cancel are clicked, we have the ability to call that function whether they whether that item exists when the page is first loaded or exists later. Um, for example, when color box is called and AJAX occurs. So, like I said, we're going to use the live function, and we pass in. We want to use the click. I don't actually know what you call this. Click event, I guess. And similarly to above, I want to use the prevent default function. So within the function, I'm going to include e. And I'll do e dot prevent default. Uh, there we go. And similarly to what we did when resizing color box, color box also gives us a function to close color box. So we're going to do it like this: um, pound sign color box dot close. And like I said a couple seconds ago. I wanted to remove this login from the URL if the user closes this field or closes the color box pop up. So I'm going to do it like this. Um, I'm going to create a page variable that I'm going to call page. So var page equals, and I'm going to get the current um, location of the window. So window.location.href. I'm going to strip out anything after a question mark. So page equals page dot substring. And we're going to look from the beginning of the string to the last index of the question mark character. 
So basically this takes the existing URL and it removes the chunk or it doesn't even remove, it um, just selects the chunk from the beginning of the URL up until the question mark character. And then I'm going to refresh the page using the new URL. So window.location equals page, like so. And let's test this and make sure it's working properly. And it is not. So uh, let's go ahead and just make sure that we refresh the page properly. And I'm just scanning for any errors or issues. Um, I guess the first thing to do, just make sure the IDs are correct and they look like they are. Um, let's also try adding an alert. Oh, I know what it is. Um, misspelled color box. I'm sure you caught that as you're watching along. So let's try this. There we go. So you notice that the URL also changed. So index.login or index.php question mark login, wait cancel, gets removed from the URL and the color box closes. Well that wraps up this tutorial so uh, join me in the next video. I'll be talking about what to do when you uh, enter in the correct username and password. I'm going to be creating a couple views for logging in and we'll also be talking about logout functionality.